Look, I know component library videos are a little bit of a cliche at this point, but I promise this one is different. We're not going to be looking at cards and buttons and just the basics to make a website work. No, what we're going to be looking at is this. This is the Svelte Animations UI library. It is really, really cool. I came across this this weekend uh, from some guys in the Discord. Shout out to them for linking me to this. And I've been really, really impressed. I wanted to show you guys a lot of the cool things we can do with this. And I went through and made a little demo site, which I'll show you how I did the code here in a second, where I just kind of spammed a bunch of these different effects. And it was really easy. It took me like an hour and a half to go through and make a site that looks like this. So for future projects I'm working on, where you want to add these kind of like really fancy modern sassy type things like the earth, like this uh, circular counter, all you have to do is use this. So the way this actually works is really simple. It's very similar to the model of like Shad CN if you've ever used that before. For like normal UI stuff, I think Shad CN Svelte is by far one of the best component libraries I've used. Uh, they have a really good CLI and basically the way it works is you go in here and say you want to add in, um, let's use this button as example, I want to add this button to my code base. The way you do that is you just add, you run the command from the command line and then that generates a button component in your components directory. So instead of installing some package deep into your node modules that's kind of esoteric and hard to work with, it's literally just adding the code into your code base. And the Svelte Animations project follows that exact same pattern. So let's use this Meteors as an example. If I go in here to this Meteors component, you'll see what it looks like up here. You'll see the code that's actually generating this little preview up here. And then in order to use this, they don't quite have a CLI. They might add one of these in the future. I think this project is on the newer side. Um, but basically all you have to do is install the base dependencies. Once you've installed this for one of them, you basically have it for all of them because they all use like the CLSX, the Tailwind Merge, etc. Then you just create this little uh, utils function. And then what we do down here is they just give you the code for the Meteors component, which is we're using up here. You just copy paste that into your code base, close it, and then import it and you have it working. So if I wanted to add the Meteors to this little example, let's say we want to put it right here. What I'll do here is the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add this to my uh, Tailwind config. You need to add in some keyframes for the nice animation up here. I'm going to go down to the keyframes. We're going to copy this. I'm going to go to my Tailwind config, go down into my keyframes. You can see I have a bunch of these in here from adding other random things from this library. So I'm going to add the Meteor in and then I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to just copy the code here. We're going to go into lib components. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and add meteors.svelte. We'll go ahead and paste this in here. Don't need to think about anything. It's all working. Uh, this is using Svelte 4 syntax, but Svelte 5 is fully backwards compatible. The way it works is it's just um, at a per component basis or really a per dot svelte file basis. It's either in runes mode or I don't know what they're calling it. Maybe traditional mode. I need to double check on that. So in this case, this one's not in runes mode, but it'll still work just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and close my Meteors file. We're going to go back to my page.svelte. So let's go ahead and put this here. I'm going to go ahead back to the documentation. I'm just going to copy this from their implementation. We'll just grab that, paste it in like that. Um, Meteors, we need to make sure that's imported. Uh, yeah, that's in there. So now all we need to do is just go back into our little site here. And you can see we have our Meteors. They're not firing. Okay, so I'm an idiot, and down here in the Tailwind config, you'll notice I grabbed the keyframes, but I didn't grab the animation. So we go back over here to the uh, Tailwind config, add into my animation section here. We do this, bam, and then now if we go to our little site and we refresh this, we will have meteors. We can go back over in here to the page.svelte. I'll just go ahead and do, um, we'll just remove this max width thing here. I think that's fine. We'll just do that. There we go. So this will just expand. And now we have our nice little meteor section coming down on our site. It's really just this easy. I'm really glad that these component libraries are all adopting this system, basically, of allowing us to just kind of copy paste the code into our projects. I've worked with UI libraries in the past a couple years ago. I think I might have even made a video about it. I really didn't like the way I think the one I was working with was like Mantine or something where you would have these kind of abstracted away components and you really didn't know what was going on in them. But with these kind of component libraries, if I want to go in here and change something about like my Meteors component, it's not that hard to do it. I mean, if I really wanted to change, like, I mean, I haven't looked at the code from this, but I'm just looking and it's like, okay, it's commented that this is the Meteor tail and we have the gradient. So it's from slate to blue. I mean, what if hypothetically I just make this green? If I change that to be green and then I go over here, we'll zoom in. Those are green now. 
like I can just change the code whenever I want. And I bet if I change this to be like purple, uh, go over here. Yep, that makes those purple. So like you get the source code for it. It's not abstracted away into some hidden node modules file that you'll never see. And again, if you have problems, you just go fix them. But a lot of these are well designed enough that you really don't need to. It's just nice that this option is there. That's all I have to say about this. All this little site I made, the source code for it, as well as a link to the library, all linked down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will talk to you soon.